David, in a previous interview, I had spoken to Ifat's Alvin Granger Jones about the Adaptation Smallholder Agriculture Program, short ASAP. For those that haven't watched uh, that interview, can you briefly outline the basics of this program and explain to us what makes ASAP unique? ASAP, it stands for Adaptation for Smallholder Agriculture Program. Uh, and obviously it's uh, led by IFAD. Uh, it aims to sort of help smallholder farmers cope with the uh, impacts of climate change both today and tomorrow. Uh, for example, how do they cope with uh, uh, droughts and floods, uh, inundation of their fields. Uh, and what it does is it adds grants alongside IFAD's uh, loans to um, these developed countries. So. ASAP is helping make these uh, agriculture developments climate smart. You are also working now with DFID, which funds ASAP. Why is the UK supporting ASAP? Well, we're supporting it from our International Climate Fund. Uh, this is 2.9 billion over three years, and up to 50% is on adaptation. Uh, we've looked at uh, the issues, and we see agriculture as one of the, perhaps the primary uh, focuses it's going to be impacted first. So the reason we're supporting ASAP is because we see pe poor people at risk in developing countries and we need to take action and we're really pleased to be supporting IFAD uh, to do that along with our other partners who are supporting IFAD which includes the, um, the Netherlands, uh, Canada, uh, Belgium and Sweden. I think other donors might also be joining. Is there Anything that you would say that is really unique? I mean, obviously the setup with the five donors is already unique. Is there anything very genuinely unique in terms of the approach on the agriculture side? It's a real recognition that uh, we need to do agriculture differently, that climate change. Uh, we, we're seeing, for example, the, the floods in Pakistan, uh, the, the, the droughts in the Sahel, the Horn of Africa, uh, and science is starting to say this is this is pretty likely down to climate change, uh, and we're seeing uh, events outside the developing world like Hurricane Sandy in the U.S. So we're really seeing um, differences happening now. And if you talk to farmers or pastors on the ground, they're saying climate is changing. So what we need to do is, you know, from agricultural and rural development, is to make sure that we, we're, we're really thinking about what the risks and perhaps opportunities of climate change are. And it's not business as usual. So that what I think makes uh, uh, ASAP uh, different. Maybe it's not unique because others are also doing uh, a range of climate smart agriculture programs or conservation agriculture. So it's it's not completely unique, but it is perhaps unique in terms of it's the first major investment of climate finance into a, into agriculture. When I had spoken to Elvin about the program, he said that the about 20% of the program is probably genuinely new of the components. Obviously, 80% is known to some degree because you can't reinvent agriculture just because climate change comes onto the scene. How do you see that? It's hard to say whether it's 20% or 30% or is, is, is new or old. I think what we need to be clear about, what really needs to be new is, is an assessment of what climate change uh, is, is going to mean to, to farmers and, and particularly women and how that's going to impact on them. Uh, because clearly some of the things we might be saying there's going to be uh, rain is going to change, it's going to be less rainfall or more hotter days. Uh, so some of the things which we did in the past like you know small scale irrigation or water harvesting, that's not a new approach. But what is perhaps new is saying actually we need to do more of this uh, and also perhaps sometimes less of other things which we don't. You know, if we're going to irrigate, let's not start setting up expensive irrigation in regions we know where there's going to be water scarcity because there's a whole set of issues there. So what is different is, is, is putting aside, uh, climate alongside other risks and opportunities because there'll be market opportunities and risks. So it's, having, it's integrating that understanding of climate into uh, into agriculture, and I think maybe just to conclude, I think farmers actually realise that climate is pretty important. I think we need, uh, as donors, as minister of agriculture, uh, international multilateral agencies, we need to realise that climate is is a real factor now that we need to address. 
IFAD is also leading a discussion on scaling up. The idea of a lot of projects that have been piloted and never been taken to scale. Um, and there was a big workshop in Addis Abeba just now. Um, do you think that ASAP is a, would provide a suitable approach for doing scaling up within? We're really pleased to see that the UK's contributions have begun to help up to 6 million farmers. And as ASAP gets to scale, you know, that we, that's probably going to be more about 8 million or perhaps even larger if, if others come in and invest uh, into ASAP. It's making a sort of real, real difference. So clearly it's influencing um, IFAD's entire investment and their loans. So it's not just a you know, $5 million, $10 million project. It's alongside larger loans. It's demonstrating how to do that. And one of the really pleased to see uh, IFAD taking the lead and setting up a knowledge management component to this to share lessons of what they're, what they're doing. Uh, also, you know, they're working very closely with the uh, Climate uh, Change and Agricultural Food Security Program of the CJIR. Uh, I'm, you know, I think they're working closely with civil society and private sector to, to, to learn lessons. So, in terms of scaling up, yes, I think they're, they're trying to do that. But also, it's about, you know, what perhaps we as DIPA are doing, looking at our own investments in agriculture, uh, what other agencies are doing. Uh, and it's also, you know, public and private investment uh, to, to deliver. Uh, it's not just climate benefits, we're talking about co-benefits. So we're focusing on, on uh, improving farmers' incomes by helping them adapt, uh, making, looking to see how we can reduce impacts on biodiversity, uh, and also looking to see how we can, um, you know, by better farming practices, perhaps reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions as well. But that is really Perhaps a, a third benefit, the principle is, is, to, is to focus on how do we help smallholder farmers. You already spoke about the, the governance setup, uh, five donors being uh, on board to support the program. Uh, does this constellation with having a number of donors being in, uh, on board on such a huge multi-million uh, dollar program, change the, the governance of the program? No, it doesn't, because the first thing to say is that ASAP projects go through the IFAD's normal governance structure. So uh, I know they have their design teams, their regional teams, they work very closely with, with their partners in, in country. Um, and then the projects go to approval of the IFAD board, of which the UK and, and the other partners we all sit on. So we're, we're not part, we're not sort of, um, uh, we're not, taking away from what IFAD is doing. Uh, what I think which we, we, we are doing is then sort of meeting as, an, a, as a sort of contact group uh, to, to, to listen to what IFAD is doing and to, to share our thinking and advice. Uh, it all, that also has the opportunity of, um, you know, donors working closely together because we know we find that uh, there's the five of us, we have a lot of common interests around doing evaluation, understanding uh, how our investments are, are delivering results, uh, and also a better understanding of how we might do more climate uh, smart agriculture in, in, in other ways. So um, it's really, a, we, we come together as an informal contact group. We're not part of the, you know, the formal governance of the, of the project and the program. That really is, is for IFAD, and then we, we look at that and at a, at a board level in terms of any approvals. Is there an opportunity for other donors to join you in the contact group and yeah, come I think, on board? You know, the exciting thing was that they were looking to work in up to 40 countries uh, in uh, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America, Asia. Uh, they've now, hoped by the end of this year, uh, they'll be putting to the board about, about 10 or 11 projects. There's, um, there's a real demand now from a country level for ASAP to be supporting more, more activities. So there's a real opportunity, I think, for, for, for ASAP to actually, you know, I mentioned earlier, uh, the original target was 8 million farmers that they were going to help cope with climate change. I think there's a real opportunity to do more. And, you know, we're, we'd be really pleased to see if I had reaching out to other uh, partners to invest in, in ASAP, so, and to, for us all to work, work together. So, but, but, yeah. We'd be very pleased to see that happening and also very happy to talk to any of the partners in the platform 
or, or, or outside the platform comes to that as well. Because we're looking at, I think, if Ad is looking at, you know, foundations and private sector investments, how we can bring it all, bring this all together. It's obviously still a little bit early on, but are there already lessons that others can draw from Diffit's, Diffit's work with ASAP? Um, if you look at the wider development agenda, especially the post-MDG framework discussion, the Green Climate Fund and so forth. Starting off on, on the Green Climate Fund, it, I'm really pleased to see, you know, um, you mentioned Elwin uh, Granger Jones at the beginning, he, he's been very active in in, in going to meetings around the Green Climate Fund, which is being designed at the moment uh, uh, with many partners involved in that. So clearly, uh, you know, agriculture probably will be, net, uh, will be one of the sectors which the Green Climate Fund will probably be looking to invest in. So uh, in terms of developing the indicators and the results frameworks for face that you know, is being shared already with the um, Green Climate Fund Secretariat and people involved in that. So that, that is really, uh, really positive. Um, turning to the post MDGs, uh, you know, we've just had the high level panel of the Secretary just reported. Uh, you know, that if you look at that, I think it's a really useful framework to help develop the, I think it will be the SDGs, so different goals. But clearly, you know, food and water, energy uh, are, are all embedded in that. and. Clearly, a program like ASAP can also demonstrate how we can, you know, also, we still need to achieve the you know, focus on the MDGs, but post MDGs, it will, it will be an important opportunity to try and bring these things together. Because uh, we hear a lot about the sort of food, water, energy nexus, and I think there's, ASAP has a lot it can, it can do in that area, and also to share knowledge on what it is doing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.